thank you, Professor French, for showing us how much you cared about our minds and our spirits, and congratulations. I can't think of anyone more deserving. You didn't let us compromise on our craft or our attention to detail, um, but you you stayed with us and, and encouraged us. I will always remember your ability to delight in all things, um, no matter what age and no matter what kind. Hey, congratulations on such a high honor, well-deserved, um, really, really happy for you and, and proud of our chapter for giving you this honor. The AIA Gold Medal is a great honor bestowed to a great professor. Your students always listen to you and will never forget your musings. I promise I won't. I don't really know that dad encouraged my brother or I, which he also ended up in the building industry as well. <laughs> so he didn't really encourage either of us to go into architecture or the building industry, but you know, dad's ability to always sort of be teaching, like everything sort of a teaching moment. I think it was hard not to end up here. He led you through these visions of what he saw in buildings. And I could not appreciate that. I think yeah, above all, Bob's uh, humility, integrity, and professional expertise. I, you know, Bob wrapped all of those uh, values or qualities in one. In fact, uh, I think it's interesting when I talk to many alumni, they still refer to him as Mr. French, which is un highly unusual these days. Um, and in fact, some of those students graduated 30 and 40 years ago. So this is you know, quite a, an honor. I distinctly remember, I can't tell you the grade. It might have been the ninth grade, it might have been the 10th grade. I saw a photograph probably about that size of a house that was built out over a waterfall. And I stared at that thing. I could not believe it. And so I mentioned it to one of my teachers and he said, well, you should go to the library downtown, Lawson McGee, and check out some books by, on Frank Lloyd Wright. They had books of drawings and they had some books that had photographs. But looking at those drawings also, I mean, there were some figure ground drawings that he had done that were just amazing. I mean, the things were coming off the page, you know, the projection of it that were fantastic so I was hooked. I, I didn't understand how like science and art could come together until he sort of illuminated that. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me and for others and thank you for all that you are. Congratulations. Congratulations on your AIA gold medal. You deserve it. You've had such an impact on so many, including myself. In a review, I was talking about materiality, and you said the only ality that I care about is reality, and I'll never forget that. He lives a life that's so beautifully cohesive. He thinks and draws and acts in the same way all the time. It's really beautiful. Architecture's tough. There are lots of hard times and you've got to get through those and you have to be excited and enthused and, and that foundation is the bedrock that you're always going back to and often it's that first teacher who really made an impact on your life. You're remembering, you know, gee, I did this project, I'm really proud of it. Mr. French would really be excited to see this. You know, he definitely wanted the philosophy of architecture but also the practicality of it because he practiced as well. So I felt like his students also wanted to understand, like, how do I actually leave school and become a practicing architect? I used to tell students the great thing about architecture is you make, when you get really good at it, you make decisions beyond the self. You know, because I had experienced that. You know, I would draw a thing and I would want it to be a certain way, but when I really analyzed it, and brought the critical thought to it, I had to change it. And that to me was, you know, putting the self aside. He taught me how important the details were of a project and a building and, um, uh, and I keep that with me every single day. Congratulations to Professor Bob French. Uh, this is a well, well-deserved honor. You've meant so much to all of us as a professor, as a friend, as a mentor, 
and helping us understand uh, the spirit of architecture. It was a privilege and an honor to get to work alongside you teaching first year studio and thank you for all your help and encouragement. With Bob's patience and guidance, he taught us how to really detail um, the design and ultimately build it with our own hands. He empowered us to create. Me as a critic, I always look, I criticize the things that I felt needed to be re-examined, you know, questioned, challenged, improved, but I also tried to, you know, find the praiseworthy things and, and, and recognize those. There's a fierce dedication to your students. There's a fierce dedication to um, understanding uh, and, and thinking about and getting at the art and science of architecture. Something I'll always remember about you is um, just bringing me back to that human scale and understanding um, that uh, the experience of the building is going to be had through five foot, six feet off the ground. It's about getting the ground to the walls, to the roof, to the sky. How do you get the concept to the drawings, to the built world? He has exemplified being a conscientious designer, conscientious architect, teacher. Who uh, encouraged us to understand what we were drawing and how it would be built. I think that's very important and that has stayed with me. It feels like 60% of the architects in this area, in this community, have had him as a professor. So whether there's anything you can specifically nail down as like this is what he did, he was there through all of it you know, through so many. Maybe that's it. Maybe his love for teaching, not just art, you know, his love for teaching and not just his love for architecture, maybe that's his legacy. So in a very pragmatic way, light uh, reveals architecture. Actual light, lighting, daylight, especially daylight, but also in an educational sense, enlightenment. So students come from high school, Bob taught first year for many years. And um, I think it's wonderful getting students um, that are fresh and showing them uh, a whole new world. You, you can watch their eyes light up. So I think that's what Bob's talking about is, is the light that you begin to see in students, to watch them light up um, by way of education. I say that architecture is a search for light. And that, you can think about that on any level you want to think about it. it. It's as simple as the sunlight coming in, you make a, a realization about how a beam meets a column. And that is light. I mean, it's enlightening. His generosity and mentorship has had an indelible impact on my development as both an architect and a citizen. I'm truly grateful for the wisdom that he has imparted and the support that he has always, always provided. You helped us all to understand the importance of the journey in design and life. He really just taught me a designer's intangible connection to a built space through how it's constructed. Professor French has undoubtedly been one of the most influential professors and mentors in my life. The aesthetics of Appalachia are unique and they give you a sense of identity. Every time I was with Bob, he taught me something new about our area that I didn't know before. I hope that you have a wonderful retirement. I'm sure you're going to get into so many wonderful things. So cheers to you, congratulations, and thank you so much. I think you were the one who really instilled the architecture with a capital A in my mind and uh, I think others as well. And you also really taught us to walk the walk. One thing that, uh, that Bob taught me while I was at UT was that you don't have to choose between the, the details and the beauty of architecture. He never stops learning, ever. And he's always fascinated with continuing to learn, which I think is what makes him such a phenomenal teacher. At its very, very best is when it engages those virtues of truth, beauty, and goodness. If that maker strives 
you know, to somehow embrace those eternal virtues, you know, it's a noble thing to do. Um, one question before I sign off. Am I allowed to call you Bob now? <laughs> <laughs>